Hello everyone, welcome again in Angman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will learn how to design artificial leaf, which is electrical submersible pump, and how to create nodal analysis from a well equipped with ESP, all right? But first, we will model a well that is unable to flow and hence need ESP to make it able to flow, all right? We will first set up the well we are now inside the well flow and we will perform the simulation using well flow. We are now inside well flow. Configuration, model navigator, initialization. General data, you can type in general data here as per your requirement. Go forward. Well and flow type. First, we select producer, no artificial leaf flow type tubing, fluid type black oil, well orientation, vertical. All right, and then forward, flow correlations, we select dance and rows with well and riser L factor of one. Forward, reference depth, well type on shore and zero depth at well head. Forward. Now we go to fluid parameters. You can follow me. The oil specific gravity 0 0.85 and the API gravity will be calculated. Gas specific gravity 0 0.65, water salinity 30,000, PPM and water gravity will be calculated. All right. Bubble point, solution GOR, and oil formation volume factor will use. Glasso equation, oil viscosity wheel at all, gas viscosity car at all, and surface tension we will use basic. No inorganics. And for this section, PVT data calculator, if you want to create the results, pressure at 3072, temperature at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and produce GOR 500, standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. You can press calculate to obtain this information. All right, apply, and then we go to reservoir section. We will create the IPR using analytical model. So we call it reservoir, all right, reservoir and pressure at 3072 PSIA and temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Middle of perforation, 8,500 feet with permeability of 79, thickness 58 feet and well radius of 0 0.35 feet water cut in fraction 0 0.6 and gas oil ratio of 500 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel. Okay, and we will use Fogel. We will use Fogel equation and total Darcy skin one for the skin options. And we go to drainage area. All right, and circular for drainage shape this one or drainage area or maybe drainage area will be calculated equivalent drainage radius of 1000 feet drainage area will be calculated dh factor this one so we assume a circular reservoir so as you can see the productivity index is 5.83 with absolute open flow of this one, more than 10,000 stock tank barrel per day with total Darcy skin of one. All right, this is the IPR. Okay, Rel perm, relative permeability, we can leave it as default. All right. Okay, and then we apply and we go to wellbore section. 
first deviation we will create a vertical well data type md tvd angle enter data for md and tvd so we will input md measured depth and tvd through vertical depth because this is a vertical well so the measured depth will be equal with the true vertical depth of 8500 feet update plot all right this is the plot purely vertical well we press apply and then we go to forward we have two tubings we call it tubing one starting from zero down to 3000 with external diameter of 5.5 internal diameter of 4.892 with default roughness okay and then for the second tubing we call it tubing 2 starting from 3000 down to 8000 all right and then the internal diameter of 4.5 internal diameter 3.6 I mean 996, right? So for the external diameter is 4.5 inch and then internal diameter of 3.996 inches, okay? With default roughness. We press apply and then we go to casing. We can make three casings. We call it casing one, starting from zero down to 3000 with external diameter of 9.513 with internal diameter of 8.681 and then second casing starting from 3000 down to 8000 okay and this one is 6.954, 6.184, or we can modify it to be seven inches with default roughness. And then the last casing, we call it casing three, starting from 8,000 down to of course, 8,500, seven inches, and then the same internal diameter. Apply, all right, as you can see. Lastly, we will input the temperature model. Okay, we can use calculated for the model and surface surrounding temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then this one, 8,500, 8,500 will be calculated, okay? All right, apply. Yeah, as you can see, we are ready. We have completed all the data input so we can check at dashboard this is our natural flow model the well bore data and reservoir data you can check and also the fluid properties okay so far so good and now we can go to analysis to perform the nodal analysis all right as you can see now, nodal analysis mode, operating point, we want to find the operating point if the well can, can flow, of course. Stability check is checked. And the outlet node, the well head pressure, okay, 200 degrees or 200 PSIA. The bottom node, of course, at the reservoir. Solution node at casing tree at bottom hole, okay? And then we can set range. We can use auto range. Click OK. Apply. Calculate. 
All right, so as you can see, there is no operating point. So at the given condition for the reservoir condition, wellbore condition, and also fluid condition, you can see the well cannot flow. The well is dead. Maybe because of, of course, primarily, of course, because of low reservoir pressure. The reservoir pressure is unable to push the fluid to flow from the reservoir or from the bottom hole to the surface. Okay, maybe also because of the fluid is so heavy because now we have fluid with water cut of 0.6 in fraction. So it means that majority the fluid is composed of water and water is heavy. The gravity is bigger compared to oil and of course to gas. All right, so this combination and also the wellhead pressure is 200. Maybe if we lower the wellhead pressure down to 100, calculate, yeah, you can see the well is able to flow. We can make it even smaller, 50 PSIA. The well can flow, obviously, all right? But at our given condition, operating condition, operation condition, the wellhead pressure is 200 PSI and the well cannot flow. And at this condition, of course, we need artificial leaf to make the well able to flow again. And that's the second chapter of our video, which is to design and to install electrical submersible pump. All right. Okay. And then we can go to design. Or maybe we can first go to configuration. Well, and flow type, producer, artificial leaf method, ESP. Apply, and you can see now we have this new section, ESP data. Okay. So far, so good. And we can also go to design. Right? These are errors. There are errors in the model. Please correct the model data before any calculation. So we can select, for example, if we want to select the pump, okay? We can select this one with nameplate, for example, for the motor or nameplate rating, okay? Let's find this one, 300 horsepower, okay. And this one, okay, we select this one and then we select, okay, and then cable size. And for the pump environment, the measured depth, pump setting depth at 8,000 feet with maximum equipment OD, outer diameter of the pump, six inches, minimum zero, operating frequency, let's say 60 hertz, upstream temperature, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, we call it ESP. Okay. And then for the wear factor efficiencies, head factor, we select pump wear factor type, head tuning factor one, motor wear factor one, gas perator present, yes. With separator frequency cannot be. 100%, so with input 0.8 in fraction. And calculation options, we check the viscosity corrections, it's important. We check also for the gassiness correction, of course, because our produce GOR is 500 standard cubic feet per stock tank barrel, and upper threshold two, lower threshold one, okay, and fluid column in analysis oil water mixture, 
okay because we have water cut of 0.6 and we can leave it as it is all right okay and then here we click this one at row okay so we will have one esp and you can see here select catalog data we now have a catalog okay and then we can maximize and from this catalog we can select the ESP that we want to install, for example. All right, let's say we prefer this one, GN4000. And let's have a few first. Okay, we have Alnas, Centrelief, ESP, Inc, Novomed, ODI, Reda. And also Valiant, Weatherford, WSP. Let's say we will select Reda GN4000. This is the OD with shaft limits at 60 degrees or 60 hertz. Okay. This is for the Monel and this is for the Inconel shaft OD housing limits for the fee thread and for the buttress we select okay all right as you can see now this is our esp plot esp curve for the head and for the motor load this is the head right so we can have in situ flow rate starting from 800 to 5,800 using this pump, okay? And then this is the motor load. And you can see this black line is our limit of best efficiency. Okay, so our flow rate in which we can achieve best efficiency, best operating point is around 3,800 stock tank barrel per day. Okay, this is for our pump and we need to input the stages. So let's say we start from 170. Okay, as you can see, the head and the motor load. And again, this is the data for motor data, pump environment, where factors, calculation options, all right? We can click apply so you can see our ESP data is completed. And you can also go to design. The data in this form has been changed. Do you want to apply? Yes. You can go to design to design the electrical submersible pump. Okay. And you can optimize using this section, right? We'll cover this section, this design parameter section in the other video okay let's say we are quite satisfied with this data input for the esp and now let's see if we go to nodal analysis all right with the same outlet not pressure well had pressure but now we have the esp we go to set range auto range okay let's see what happened apply calculate all right as you can see we just go to report but we can go to here the section first as you can see this is our nodal analysis with esp right very interesting so of course first now the well can flow this is our ipr okay let me edit the plot and of course, this is the outflow, the VLP. Okay, or maybe this one. Okay, beautiful. So the operating pressure will be 1,945 PSIA with liquid rate. Now we can flow at 5,061 stock tank barrel per day. This is the oil flow rate, water rate, gas rate, 
and of course water cut of 60 percent or 0 0.6 in fraction this is the produce gor as per input and the status is above pump maximum okay we can leave it as it is for now and we can modify the data the esp parameter later on but we are quite satisfied okay that's the main point now the well is able to flow again because of the artificial leaf all right this is the liquid rate water rate gas rate all right okay and we can also check the well bore equipment profile to obtain the pressure and temperature profile okay this is of course the pressure profile starting from the reservoir pressure of this one 3072 okay and then we go down to this one and what is the pressure at this one of course this one 2129 psia the pressure at this point okay which is the pressure at the bottom hole okay at the bottom hole and then go up first down to the level of our pump okay our pump is located at 8000 so this this is the intake pressure right now you understand the operating pressure this one is the intake pressure pump intake pressure 1945 is the pump intake pressure the bottom hole pressure the pressure at sand face or in the front of the perforation is this one 2129 all right so far so good and then the pressure is increased significantly because of the pump up to this one okay close to 3000 psia and then it it flows up and of course this one is the wellhead pressure of 200 psia as per input okay and then this is the temperature profile you can see the temperature increase at this interval of course because the fluid is pumped so the pressure and the temperature rise and you can also check the esp performance so now our operating condition is here you can see we are operating outside the best performance area of our pump so maybe i recommend you to to select bigger pump okay in order to make the operating point within the best efficiency zone okay but for the time being let's accept this one first and later on in the future we can select other case to to make it better all right so this is the esp performance curve with gn 4000 and for the esp gassiness or maybe you can see the the head this is the head okay and this is the pump horsepower all right okay you can see well curve base case okay this is the head our head is now denoted here by this cross and the horsepower okay esp gaziness you can see no free gas effect the status is important so operating pressure, liquid rate, water cut, produce GOR, intake pressure, of course, percent of free gas, 1.93 here in percent. So no free gas effect. It's good. Okay. Upper gasiness threshold, the green zone, lower gasiness threshold, the red the red line i mean and the green line you can check the report the log and so on and so forth and again we go to the nodal analysis it's okay and now we go to sensitivity we can perform sensitivity analysis 
with several parameters. For example, I want to concentrate on the ESP itself. So let's say in artificial leaf, we can vary the ESP setting depth, motor and nameplate, motor wear factor, operating frequency, pump and stage, pump wear factor, and separator efficiency. We are interested in this one, operating frequency, of course, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Okay. We click add. Now we have this one, operating frequency. Okay, interesting. And sensitivity one, we select operating frequency. We calculate. Okay. We go to plot variables, sensitivity variables. We select those four, we click OK. And then we go to flow curves. All right, you can see as we increase the operating frequency from 40 to 70, of course, we will have higher flow rate, OK? With 70 hertz, now we can flow close to 6,000 stock tank barrel per day. Whereas with 40 hertz, we can only flow at 3,220 stock tank barrel per day, all right? So again, if we want to optimize our ESP, we can easily do it with increasing the frequency. Usually the 70 hertz is the, the best or the optimum frequency, okay? In my experience, 40 is low, 50 and 60 is base, okay? And then 70 is high or optimum, okay? You can also check the wellbore equipment profile, ESP performance, all right? Operating rate versus operating frequency, operating pressure versus operating frequency, all right? So as you can see, operating rate versus operating frequency. Okay, as we increase the operating frequency, of course, our operating rate increases. Okay, operating pressure, of course, in decreases. Okay, because of higher flow rate, ESP gasiness, still no free gas effect. Okay, interesting. Yeah, you can you can do sensitivity analysis with other variable. Let's see what we will have if we choose motor and nameplates. This one. Yeah, it's 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 not that easy because we have to have knowledge regarding the motor and the explanation, the specification of each motor. Okay. So it's not that easy if you want to vary the motor and nameplate. And we can do for pump and stages, okay? Let's say we still select the same pump, GN4000. Okay. You can easily type in actually G. This one, let's say the base one, 170. We decrease the stage, 150. And let's see if we increase or we select bigger pump. This, for example, 150 also. We click add. Now we can also combine the sensitivity analysis like this one but the plot will be so messy okay so i prefer selecting only one case or one sensitivity analysis which is pump and stage calculate okay and then plot variables flow curves all right 
still. Okay, as you can see, first is GN4000 stage 170, the thick red line, and this one, let's change it to green properties, make it thicker. Okay, and then this one, we can change it to black. Okay, and then make it thicker. All right. So if we reduce the stage, the effect is not that significant. Okay. As you can see, the outflow is very close from one to the other. But if we select bigger pump, okay, with GN7000, we can significantly increase the flow rate, but still we are operating above pump maximum. So as you can see, you can select either pump or reduce the stage or also at the same time, maybe reduce lower the operating frequency. Yeah, you can do it trial and error mode to find the best pump. Okay, the most optimum pump for your well, for your operation, All right? I think we can, we can call it a day. So that's all in this video, we have learned about performing nodal analysis in a well that is unable to flow first, all right? And then we select how to design ESP or maybe in our video, designing or selecting ESP and using it to equip our well and to make our well able to flow again. And we perform nodal analysis using the ESP. We create the pressure and temperature profile. And we also perform nodal analysis or sensitivity analysis. We vary the operating frequency and we also vary the pump and the stages, all right? That's all, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope the video is useful and see you again in the next well flow videos, all right? Thank you.